2 30 in the morning. The last thing you'd expect to hear are gunshots on your block and even worse, finding one of those bullets in your home. At just one year old, Ocean has been in and out of the emergency room at least four times. And since her daughter's death, Sherry Ingram has acted as grandmother, caregiver and grieving mother. While handling all of that, her mission to figure out who pulled the trigger and why has not wavered. People were walking around downtown protesting. LMPD did not have a strong presence. We've seen the homicide numbers climb. We've seen the families reel from pain. But what trauma nurses and doctors are seeing, they say is unlike years before and even summers past. Controversial posts took up a big chunk of Tuesday night's committee meeting, claiming the posts were too anti-police. Those words could end up making or breaking the entire purpose of the Civilian Review Board. People who walked through those doors to attend Easter Sunday services ended up walking out to find this. A notice that says their license plate numbers have been recorded and reported. Wines report says because of policies, the National Guard's actions are justified. The LMPD officers who shot pepper balls then later used their firearms aren't facing charges either. But that doesn't mean they're clear. The FBI and DOJ are still conducting their own investigations, and the McAtee family won't stop fighting in court. The bikers revved up their engine, made the long trek here to show their support for Breonna Taylor and her family, all for a purpose of bringing a memorial in Breonna Taylor's name to life. Yeah, so last time yeah, when you guys checked in on us, it has been, um, it, it hasn't been as violent as it was um, just a few moments ago, actually. Oh! People have expressed their outrage that there wasn't enough input from the community and that they can't trust the fact that Mayor Fisher made this decision. And they took to the streets to try and make their voices heard once again. An SUV barges through the intersection on Main Street and the Second Street Bridge where protesters stopped traffic. The car drives onto the bridge. Two people chase it with guns. Then bullets fly. That's photographer James Dobson telling me to get down to avoid the bullets. We weren't hit. This group says they represent the black community and want people to know what they think about LMPD's new chief. We don't want Erica. It's over. Go back to ATL. We don't want her at all. Some LMPD officers say they don't endorse the choice either. George Rodman, a retired LMPD officer and father to Nick Rodman, who died in the line of duty in 2017, says officers want to give Shields a chance. But none of these groups say the new chief will help mend the community so long as Mayor Fisher is doing the hiring and firing. Others, including gun violence survivors, say a new face may bring hope. They need that fresh start. They need that kind of at least attention. They welcome that today. That doesn't speak to every survivor in the city, but I can guarantee every survivor in this city that they had two families in there today who was advocating for them. Shields will start on the 19th as the new chief, and from there, we'll see how she has an impact on the community. In downtown Louisville, Jerrica Valtiera, Wave 3 News. The FBI complaint says the United Pharaohs group and the Boogaloo Boys were amongst the downtown Louisville streets protesting after Breonna Taylor's death on January 6th, the same day as the U.S. Capitol attacks. We were there covering protests when gunfire rang out. And that was just one of the instances listed in the federal documents. According to the FBI complaint, Jonathan Sobleski fired shots from his assault rifle at a black SUV speeding through the intersection on 2nd and Main Streets while protesters blocked the roads. Standing just feet behind us, investigators say he fired the shots unbeknownst to myself and my photographer until we heard the gunfire. Sobleski is looking at federal rioting charges. This is video from the raid at his downtown apartment. The complaint cites Sobleski making threats, one specifically asking how to drop stuff from drones. 
Here's an interview he did with our crews during the summer of protests. Hoping for peace, you know, as is everybody, but I mean, we should be able to meet force with force if necessary. Along with the UPG and Boogaloo Boys Group, authorities have been keeping an eye on its members who have been seen acting aggressively, blocking drivers, including this incident recorded on St. Matthew's police dash cam video. According to the complaint, Adam Turner is another known extremist militia member who was arrested after allegedly carrying a rifle, putting his finger on the trigger while officers tried to tame the situation. Turner then threatened to injure a St. Matthews police officer, creating a picture with a target on his face, then posting it on social media. On Thursday, he stood virtually before a federal judge for threatening to hurt the officer. Third and fourth raid sought to find Andrew Peckett, who has not been arrested, but mentioned in the FBI complaint, meeting with extremist militia members. He ran for a Metro Council position, but lost. Electronics and belongings were pulled by federal agents from Peckett's home on Manslick Road. Federal agents did raid another home in Old Clarksville, also connected to Peckett. If both men are convicted, their sentences carry up to five years in prison and fines. As clear as day, a barrage of gunfire roars through this Audubon neighborhood. But to hear it going like that was just like, holy cow, who's having a shootout? We spoke with the Kelman family earlier this week to talk about the crimes caught on their ring doorbell camera. Nearly 20 seconds of video of just resounding gunfire. These criminals are the ones Major Aaron Kroll and his officers in criminal interdiction work to take off the streets. What Major Kroll says is alarming. They're seizing more assault rifles, high capacity magazines and guns with illegal alterations. Believe it or not, a majority of guns used in these crimes were at one point purchased legally. How they got into the wrong hands? Rifle gun owners leaving their weapons in cars, unlocked burglaries and carjackings. Criminals are going to do what criminals do. Violent offenders are going to find guns. And unfortunately, they get them, they're going to use them. On Wednesday, LMPD pulled over a car. Inside, 20-year-old LaJuantre Gray and 28-year-old Christopher King and two other juvenile passengers were arrested. In that traffic stop, seven guns pulled off the street, all reported stolen. Within this last week, officers seized a total of 12 guns possessed illegally. They've just changed hands repeatedly and, you know, been acquired by unlawful means. We really need the public's help in securing their weapons so they don't fall into the hands of, of these violent criminals. Greg Kelman says he hopes this incident is the last time he has to worry about the safety of his family in his own home. I'm glad that they've got somebody. Will they get convicted? Will they get tried? How bad of a slap will they get on the wrist? The next task at hand, LMPD is working on building partnerships with the ATF, federal and county courts to make sure that these criminals actually stay off the street and mitigating the gun trade between the wrong hands. Cassidy Stalker is stronger than cancer and she's proving it. It was horrible and it was scary and I threw my shoe at the wall, but it, but it also was a relief because I finally knew it wasn't just in my head. The debilitating anxiety waking up in the middle of the night with migraines, serious weight loss wasn't a figment of her imagination. It was real and it was an inoperable brain tumor on her hypothalamus, making this 12 year old go through years of pain and agony. The scar on her head exemplifies that. It's just it's hard to go through things and think it's your fault think it's your own fault and that you should be doing better. Stalker still finds the strength even after the chemotherapy sessions and heavy medicating. She still gets on her YouTube channel to help motivate kids going through the same thing she is. It's kids like Stalker who Rodney Smith Jr. travels the country to meet with. He uses his platform Raising Men Lawn Care Service to give back to the community. And for each blade of grass cut down, he learns about what it's like to walk in their shoes. A parent shouldn't have to bury their kids. A lot of kids are experiencing cancer and sadly they're passing before their parents. My goal is just to bring awareness to all the different forms of cancer that kids are, are going through and to see if we can help some of these families. But Cassidy Stocker impressed Smith with her wisdom and maturity, a young lady way beyond her years, as she signs her name on a yellow ribbon making her mark. Cassidy Stocker talked about Smith's planned visit on her YouTube channel. And on Wednesday, 
raised money to give to Smith to continue on his mission. It means a lot to me and all the kids. No one, obviously no one wants to go through and most people don't want to think about, but you choose to think about it and we really appreciate it. Stocker will continue to share positive messages on her YouTube channel and fundraise for missions like Smith's, other kids with cancer, and the hospital staff who looks after them. Jerica Valtiera, Wave 3 News.